In this video we're going to talk about sketching shear force and bending moment diagrams. What we mean by sketching is getting the general form and shape of a diagram. We're not interested here in the precise numbers. There are two reasons why we might want to do this. One is to check some detailed calculations. So we may have done some hand calculations or computer analysis and we want to know if we've, if we've got, the, got things correct, if the shape that we're predicting from a sketch matches the output from our calculations, there's a good chance we've got them right. The second reason we might want to do this is that if we're doing some calculations, it's often a lot quicker to produce shear force and bending moment diagrams if we know the shape and we just need to fit the numbers to it. So, to, to develop sketches, we're going to use two relationships from beam analysis. The first of these relates the shear force V to the load W, and what it says is the derivative of the shear force is equal to the negative value of the load. Or in other words, the gradient of the shear force diagram is equal to the negative of the load. To see how this works, consider a small section of beam with a uniform load on it. Um, now, this could be part of a much larger problem. So here we can't, we can't say anything about the precise numbers. But what we can say is that the gradient of the shear force diagram has to be negative because the load is positive and it has to be linear because again because the load is is constant and so as in the figure there we have a linear shear force diagram with a negative gradient because of this relationship that we've got on the left so having that idea in place we can then come to the second relationship we're going to use and this is similar but it links the bending moment to the shear force and what it says is the gradient of the bending moment diagram is equal to the shear force. So if we draw a bending moment diagram underneath the shear force diagram, as we normally do, we can very quickly start to get a feel for the shape of the bending moment diagram. So in this example, if we start at the left-hand side of the diagrams, then the shear force is large and positive at this point, and so the gradient of the bending moment diagram is large and positive, so it's a steep initial slope on the bending moment diagram. As we move towards the right, the value of the shear force reduces, and so the gradient of the bending moment diagram also reduces. And once the shear force has gone negative, then the slope of the bending moment diagram is also negative. Final point to note here is that where the um, shear force diagram is zero, where it crosses the x-axis. The bending moment diagram is, in this case, a maximum. It could alternatively be a minimum. And this is generally true, that the zero shear force is equal to either a maximum or a minimum in a bending moment diagram. So, with those ideas in place, we can look at a more realistic example. So here we've got a beam with a uniform load on it, acting downwards, maybe self-weight. Two point loads also acting downwards, maybe people standing on the beam. And then two vertical loads acting upwards, perhaps from the supports of the beam. A very common sort of problem in structural engineering. And we want to know what the form of both the shear force and bending moment diagrams are for this, this problem. So, if we start with the shear force diagram, then well, we should note two things. One is at the left-hand end, there's no support, so we know the shear force is zero. And secondly, in the overhang, we, or along the whole length of the beam, there's a constant positive load, and so we'd expect in the first section of the beam, as drawn, a linear negative shear force. We then get to the first point load. Now, this is acting up, and so it's a, a negative load. And the best way to think about a point load is a very short, intense, distributed load. And so what we get is a step change in the shear force diagram. Um, because it's a true point load, this is, this is a vertical line rather than just having a positive gradient. Beyond that, we have uniform load until the next point load. And then under each of the point loads, we have little step changes of the shear force diagram. And at the right-hand end, we know the shear force has got to be zero again because it's a free, free end. So very quickly, we've managed to draw the shear force diagram for this problem. If we then move on to the bending moment diagram, then as before, we should draw this underneath the shear force diagram. And the first thing we should note is probably that there are three places where the shear force diagram is zero. And so there are three places where we expect either a maximum or a minimum on the bending moment diagram. 
the next thing to note is that the free end on the left hand side must have a zero bending moment and because in the, the overhang on the left hand end the shear force is negative we expect a negative bending moment a negative slope in the bending moment diagram and also one that increases up to the um, point load where the support is. At this point the shear force diagram switches from negative to positive and so we expect the gradient of the bending moment diagram also to switch from negative to positive. We can then sketch the bending moment diagram up until the point where the shear force diagram again crosses the x-axis. and We know at this point there must be a maximum in the shear force diagram. and The gradient switches from positive to negative. Where there's a step change in the shear force diagram but it doesn't cross the axis, what this tells us is there's a step change in the gradient of a bending moment diagram, something like that. And then finally we have another um, minimum in the bending moment diagram because of a step change in the shear force diagram and we can draw the final piece up to the end of a beam. So although there are no numbers here, we very quickly managed to get the shape of both the shear force and bending moment diagrams. And if we were doing some calculations, this would allow us a valuable check on whether we've got things correct. And it also tells us very quickly, in conceptual terms, how the beam is behaving.